If you're watching this, then it's probably because you're rolling a ranger and you want to get to maps as quickly as possible. I'm going to show you the optimal skills and tree to get to level 28 quickly and safely, with minimal re-rolling later. We will then move on to the best ascendancies for pure speed. This guide will be fast paced and so may not be suitable for complete beginners. If you're in that category, you may want to watch some of my other beginner friendly guides first. Links in the description. During the guide, I will be using the boots seven league steps. These will allow me to run fast without giving the character any other bonuses because they just grant 50% increased movement speed. They do have a four link, which I will avoid using until I drop my first. We start with burning arrow and pierce, which makes really easy work of Hillock if we kite him. In town we get Caustic Arrow from Targley for completing the Enemy at the Gate quest. This will replace Burning Arrow to become our new 2 link. Out onto the coast now and we do not need to kill anything in here unless it's in a big enough pack to cause us problems. Into the mudflats and head to all the rower nests and pick them off from a distance, and then kite them until dead. We used to just run in and loot the nests, but since they buffed Act 1 this is now pretty much suicide and we must kill them before looting. If you get stuck looking for the nests, remember they form a triangle with streams running between them. Head to the right side of the arena, touch the wall and head into the submerged passage. Once in there, immediately take the waypoint back to the coast. Head into the tidal islands now and head down the left hand side until you reach the wrecked boat. Kill Hailwijk. He now tries to predict where you will be to fire his projectiles. Alternate your movement direction between his hits to prevent him from doing this. Grab the medicine chest and log out. Once back in town, grab Quicksilver Flask and Volley for the medicine chest quest from Nessa. And for breaking some eggs, a shrapnel ballista and dash from Tarkley. The new 3 link will be Caustic Arrow, Volley and Pierce. We will be using a shield from level 12, so keep an eye out for one with movement speed and green sockets. Remember that the vendor's inventory resets each time you level. It should go without saying that you should keep an eye out for runner's boots too. Head back to the submerged passage and head upwards to the bridge. This is normally to the right side of the arena. Drop a portal on the bridge and then head for the exit into the ledge. When on the ledge, follow the path right to the end into the climb. Avoid killing anything that is not blue or in a big enough pack to kill you. Once in the climb, head right and grab the waypoint. If there's a large open area below the waypoint, head that way to the right, otherwise upwards and to the right. Look for the green archer on the cliff and dash right past him. Don't stop running till you reach the prison and take the waypoint back to town. Head for the portal back to the submerged passage and head downwards into the flooded depths. In the unlikely event it isn't down, go up. In here we're looking for a large area surrounded by water with bubbles in that water. Once you find it, you will find the Dweller of the Deep and kill it. For fighting bosses, we drop three shrapnel blisters and hit them repeatedly with Caustic Arrow. Once he's down, grab any decent loot and log out. Back in town now and we're going to pick up lesser multiple projectiles for the quest reward and buy Void Manipulation. These will be from Nessa. Then head over to Tarkleaf for the skill book for killing the Dweller of the Deep. We will now form two three links, the first being Caustic Arrow, Volley and Void Manipulation, and the latter being Siege Ballistas, lesser multiple projectiles and Pierce. Now run through the various areas of the prison until we find Brutus. Keep those totems down to distract him, and keep your distance while hitting him with Caustic Arrow. When he falls, loot and log. Pick up Precision for completing the Cage Brute quest, and then port to Prisoner's Gate. Run around the edge until you find the offshoot that takes you to the ship's graveyard. In here, grab the waypoint, find the overturned boat and enter the cave beneath it, and then find the quest marker. Grab it and escape. Head for the entrance to the Cavern of Wrath, top right of the ship graveyard. Grab the waypoint and port back to the ship graveyard and kill Fairgraves. That's if his lines don't kill you with boredom first. Once he's down, log. Grab Poisonous Concoction from Nessa as a quest reward for entering the Cavern of Wrath. Drop the blister and caustic arrows, get rid of the bow as Poisonous Concoction must be unarmed. If you did find a shield, equip it now, otherwise buy a cheap one from Tarkley. Our new 3 link will be Poisonous Concoction, Lesser Multiple Projectiles and Volley. Keep Void Manipulation socketed somewhere if you have a spare green slot to keep it levelling as we will be using it in our 4 link later. Activate our Precision Aura for accuracy and crit chance, and pick up Charisma and Vitality from Nessa and use as soon as you can. Providing you get to level 12 before Mervale, this is what we'll be using to kill her. To get to Mervale, we will need to run through the Cavern of Wrath and Anger. Also, before the fight, try to get some Cold Resistance. If you have an Iron Ring, you can sell it with a blue gem to get a Cold Resistance Ring. Poisonous Concoction gains damage from the amount of life our Life Flask gives us, meaning we don't have to constantly upgrade our weapons as we level just our flasks which is far, far cheaper. Poisonous Concoction does consume life flask charges, so we will want to get this cluster on the tree. Once Mavale is down, head out the door behind her and sprint through the forest to the Actu town. Sell any junk and head out to the right hand door into the old fields. Follow the path till you reach the exit to the crossroads. If you don't have your second Quicksilver Flask, then drop a portal at the door or near the den entrance if you come across that first. Into the crossroads and head to the waypoint. 
If you don't have the Quicksilver, then port to town, follow the portal to the den, and kill the big white bear at the end. Log and get your flask from Yina. Take the waypoint back to the crossroads and head straight up until you find the Chamber of Sin. Head to the centre of the chamber and follow the direction of the waypoint to the stairs into level 2. There is a Trial of Ascendancy in here, follow a narrow offshoot and follow it till the end where you will seek and destroy Fidelitas. Killing every boss in the early game follows the same line. Run around the target and throw poisonous concoction at them until they die. Grab the Baleful Gem from the crafting bench and log. Log back into town and grab Herald of Agony as the quest reward from Groost. Head left now into the Riverways. Follow the path from right to left and grab the waypoint when you pass it. We are using dash so you may have some trouble jumping the broken bridges. If this is the case, find another way round. I hate dash. There are some new mobs in here, they look like trees. Nasty little buggers shoot toxic rain at us and a very rippy. Keep moving to avoid, eventually you'll find the door to the western forest. Follow the path to the bottom of the map, grabbing the waypoint and noting the side of the path it is on. At the bottom of the map, kill Captain Artiri. Grab the thematic emblem from his lifeless corpse and shove it into the thematic seal. Best still in Act 1 will give you a skill book for this, but not quite yet. Head up the wall in this area on the opposite side of the path to the waypoint. Eventually you'll find the Weaver's Chamber. Go in and find the arena and kill the Weaver. When she's down, grab the stick type thing and log out. When we log back in, go to Act 1 and get the skill book. Then the Broken Bridge to kill Creighton and the Wetlands to kill Oak. Once he's down, find the waypoint and port back to the Western Forest. Head in the direction of the wall on the same side of the path as the waypoint. Once you hit the wall, head down to find a Lyra. Help her for resist, crit multi and mana. If this is not your league starter and you have leveling gear, then you could consider killing her for the two skill points instead. We don't need any of the quest rewards from Silk for killing the Weaver, so grab any of them before continuing your journey into the Val Ruins. Eventually you'll find a ball sitting on a bridge. Touch it and stuff goes dark till the end of Act 2, which is swiftly approaching. Go past the ball and find the exit to the Northern Forest and run to the top, exiting through the waterfall into the cavern, followed by the Ancient Pyramids. Get to the top of the pyramids and kill the Val Overseer. This is slow and painful fight, but not as slow as him getting out of the ground. It is fairly easy to do Deathless. Once he's down, log and port straight to Act 3. From the waypoint, head left until you find Clarissa. She's chained to a post. Killed the guard captain and talked to her before heading into town. Failed to talk to her and she won't be in town when you need her later. I personally failed to talk to her in this run. When will I ever listen? When will I ever learn? When you get into the town, run up the wall and head out right to the slums. Eventually find the crematorium and head in. There is a trial of ascendancy in here. Eventually you'll reach Piety. There's a crafting recipe right next to her. Kill her ads and knock her down to 50% health and she'll run away. Touch Tolman and pick up his band. Take it to Clarissa and she'll give you the sewer key. Talk to Maramoa and pick up Grace. We'll be using this as soon as we get the mana nodes and the Grace mana reservation efficiency from the tree. Exit to the slums again and open the sewer grate and head in. You can start to drop four links from here. When you get a four link, all green, our sockets will be poisonous concoction, less immortal projectiles, volley and void manipulation. Do remember to grab the waypoint in here as we will need it later. Also grab the three busts for the skill point. The exit to the market is always up and far left of the waypoint. Run through the market. There's not an awful lot to do in here apart from find the entrance to the battlefront. If you need the Trial of Ascendancy, it's in the catacombs that you almost always run past to get there. In here, head out the door to the left and slightly downwards till you find the waypoint. There's a quest item to pick up directly below the waypoint. If you're level 24 or above, go to the docks left, under, then the Slara's Temple. You will run the other area you didn't run after this one. I'm level 24, so docks it is. In the docks, you need to find the supply container quest marker. Open the container and pocket the item. This area is very good for XP, so I do try and gain a level or two in here, then log and find your way to the other area. In the Slyra's Temple, find the stairs to the next level and then find the Nora Cockroach Lady. Grab the Strength Amulet and get the Explosive Talc Stuff. Log out. When you log back in, port to the sewers and blow the Fatberg below the waypoint. Head out to the Ebony Barracks. Grab the waypoint and head to Gravisius. This fight is long and painful. Prepare to kite. Eventually he'll die and you should be level 28. At this point you may want to start taking your own path with your own skills, but stick around to the end to find out the fastest path for each ascendancy. Continue on and up from here to the Lanaris Temple. In here we fight Piety again. This fight does not cause any major concerns for this build, but it's quite slow. Once she's down, grab the key and log. Log back in and head through the Imperial Gardens. Once you find the waypoint, follow the wagons. Enter the Scepter of God and get to the very top to fight Dominus. This fight is long and hard, you will need to use Dash to dodge some of the heavier hits. Once you kill the man, go for the beast. The beast can cause bleed, but if you have the flask nodes, 
you will be regenerating flash charges more quickly than you can use them, and this phase will be no issue to you. Another super tip for increasing your speed is to tickle the like button. It might just cause you to get the layouts you need, and even if it doesn't, you'll have helped the like button feel loved. Sometimes it's lonely here. Once he's down, and that's Dominus, not the like button, head out to the aqueduct and head right to left to the Act 4 town of Highgate. As soon as you get to town, head right into the dried lake. Look for an area surrounded by a fence with a quest marker. Go inside and kill Vol. He will drop Deshret's banner. Grab this and log. Once we're back in, head straight for the gates to the mine and use the banner to open it. Head upwards until you find the exit to the mines level 2. In here, we're going to want to find Deshret and touch her for the skill point book from Tasuni. Once you've done that, find the exit to the crystal veins and find the waypoint. Take the waypoint back to town and grab the skill book before heading into the lab. Once you've vanquished Azaro, it's time to ascend. We have three options open to us, Deadeye, Raider and Pathfinder. Deadeye is all about projectile support. She gives you the option to chain one additional time, have far shot on your hits, or two additional projectiles. She also has some great buffs to action speed in the form of gathering winds. Get this first to run the fastest. On to Raider, and this is the permanent utility ascendancy, giving us things like onslaught all the time with a 100% buff. That's 40% attack cast and movement speed, which is absolutely insane. I would strongly suggest going Rapid Assault first for the 100% uptime of Onslaught. And last but not least, Pathfinder. This is a fully paid up member of the Flask Appreciation Society. Seriously, she has some ridiculous flask buffs, making you really survivable in some cases. She's also the only character in game who has access to poison proliferation. We will go first for Nature's Adrenaline, giving us 15% increased movement speed whenever a flask is up, which is all the time. We also get a nice 20% increase to attack speed with it. This video will help you to run faster, but if you want to get even faster, click on the video top left, which will give you general tips for all classes to help you shave more time off your runs. Interested in playing more Poisonous Concoction? Check out my build guide top right. If this video is a little too fast for you, check out the POB, which has extensive notes and early levelling tree. You will find it in the description below. And with that, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.